Have you ever thought of what the judgment day will be like? What will we be judged on? What will be the yardstick for our judgment? If we do not find out what the Bible says about this, we will not have proper knowledge of how we should live our lives. When we know what we will be judged on, we will be able to live in its consciousness and be guided by it. We will look at two factors. I am by no means saying these two are the only factors our lives will be reviewed on, but they are two of the many factors our lives will be reviewed on. Matthew 22, verses 37 to 40, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. What will matter in the end will not be the number of church services you attend or the number of sermons you preached. The only thing that will matter is the extent to which you walked in love towards God and men. All that the prophets taught and was emphasized in the laws of Moses is centered on love, love towards God and towards man. The Ten Commandments can be summarized in love. The first four laws have to do with love for God, while the last six have to do with love for fellow humans. So today you need to ask yourself, do you love God? Do you love Him? Do you honestly truly love him or do you just proclaim you love him how do i know i love god the bible tells us john 14 verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments this is the judge of the world speaking this is the head of the church speaking to us all that matters is that you love him and the evidence of the fact you love him is you keep his commandments. Loving him is the first and greatest commandment. Loving him is the biggest factor. It's not about how much you know about the Bible. It's, it's not about how much you attend church. It's not about how much you know about prophecy. The biggest factor is, do you love God? Loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind means that God is at the core of your being. He is your heartbeat, and all other relationships take a secondary role to your relations with Him. Loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind means that you have allowed Him to flood the thoughts of your heart. You love Him with everything you have. If you can get your eyes off this world and off yourself and focus them on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see what he has done for you. He first loved you even when you were a sinner. In your deliberate disobedience, he loved you. Many of us confuse love for the things of God with a real passion for God. Love for the things of God does not automatically translate to love for God. It is possible to love church worship or love church fellowship without really loving God. If all those things are taken away, God may not make sense to you anymore. Loving God means loving Him for who He is and all He has done to redeem you. He sent His only Son for you. He sent him down to earth knowing that he would sacrifice himself and die for you. He did all that just to save you. He did all that just so you could have the chance at eternal life with him when the world was drowning and it desperately needed a saviour. If our greatest need had been information, he would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, he would have sent a scientist. 
and if our greatest need had been money, he would have sent us an economist. But since our greatest need was forgiveness, he sent a savior. He chose you, but do you choose him? He loves you, but do you love him? When you were lost, he found you. When you were broken, he mended you. When you cried, he comforted you. You have no idea what you mean to God. He only wants the best for you. You are precious to him. He would never want to harm you. But yet, you hurt him. You know he hates sin, and yet you act this way. God has given us his laws with the best interest at heart, and all he gets from us is disobedience, and then when something goes wrong, we blame him. If only you would listen to him, if only you would hear his word, if only you would obey his commandments. There is so much heartache you could have avoided, so many tears that did not need to be shed. If only you would listen to him, God would never steer you wrong. God is not the one out to get you. How could he be when he sent his only son to save you? God shines his light into our life, but all we ever do is run into the darkness. You choose to love a human more than him. And when they hurt you, he is the one who fixes you. When they lie to you, he is the one who holds the truth. And when they leave you, it is he who will always be there for you. God is the only constant we have in our lives, even when you ignore him. Several times in God's word we read that people became his friend and that he became theirs. You only come to him for help. You never just want to talk to God. You always want or need something and he helps you because he loves you. You sin, you turn your back on him, but he always forgives you when you ask him. And then you go and do it again, and again, and again. But there will come a day where God can no longer forgive you, when he will have to judge you. This is God's universe and he has created laws for it. Laws that you must keep and even though he loves you, there are consequences when you break them. When your love is from the right source, you would be able to live a selfless life for God. We know how far we can go for people we really love, the risks we can take, and the seemingly silly things we can do because of them. When we really love God, we will do all in our capacity to put a smile on His face. We will live holy and strive to bring more people into His kingdom. It's not about the miracles and wonders. When love is missing, everything else will fail. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7 verse 21. The second commandment, love your neighbor, your neighbor is not necessarily that person who lives next door. Your neighbor is anyone who you have the capacity to help. Let's see Jesus' response to Who is my neighbor in Luke 10? But he, desiring to justify himself, asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered, saying, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, You go and do likewise. Everyone around you is your neighbor, and you must be ever willing to show love to as many people as possible. 
The Bible tells us that when Jesus walked on earth, he went about doing good. This is how we also should live. We should be glad to offer help to those who need it. When we walk in love towards people, it will be difficult to sin against them. Would you steal from someone you love? No. When we walk in love, we cannot sin against each other. If we love God, we will keep His commandments. 1 John 5 verse 3 Our love for God will motivate us to preach the gospel and get men saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. There is no greater expression of love for your neighbor than preaching the gospel. Just imagine the feeling you will have in heaven to know that God used you as a vessel to bring a soul to Christ and for all eternity you will be able to look at that person and know because of the grace of God and your obedience to the gospel that person can enjoy the wonder of heaven. God will give crowns in heaven and one of which is the crown of rejoicing. This crown will be given to those who faithfully are witnesses to the saving grace of God and leads souls to Jesus. This crown has also been named the Soul Winner's Crown. It indicates here that God will be giving a crown to those who have witnessed to others and leading people to Christ, telling others about the grace of God, telling others about Jesus is the greatest thing that you can do for someone while here on this earth. When you help someone to be led to the Lord, you have just been used as a vessel of God. It says in the Bible, Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. God will judge you by your willingness and desire to be used by Him to witness to others, not necessarily on how many actually get saved because we are to water and He gives the increase. What will we answer for the Great Commission? When we stand before God on the Day of Judgment, we will receive judgment based on our expression of love towards God and man. We cannot say we have God and not choose to walk in love. Living a life of love is a proof that God lives in us because God is love. If God dwells in us, it simply means that love dwells in us. Whoever does not know God cannot know love. If you want to know how to walk in love, you need to draw closer to Him and let His love permeate your heart. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew 25, verses 35 to 36. I stress again, these two commandments are two of the many factors our lives will be reviewed on. When you love God, you will keep His commands. When you love people, you will be at peace with them. Without peace and holiness, no one will see God. Hebrews 12 verse 14 Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. God has tapes. Hebrews 4.13 Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. There were two brothers, they have different professions, and they were working very hard. One day they went to give God their offerings. The first gave God his, and God did not accept it. 
The second gave God his, and God accepted his offering. The first was very angry at the second because his offering wasn't accepted by God. At this moment, no one was there. But there was not a single soul to record how the event happened, but God could see everything. The first brother thought no one could see anything. He snuck up to his brother and killed him. God saw him commit the act and asked him where his brother is. He said he wasn't his brother's keeper. We should already know this story. That is the story of Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel secretly, but God could see everything in the open. A man went into a store to steal some cash on the store. He broke in through the back door. It was midnight and no one saw anything. The next day, he was arrested. They showed him the CCTV footage. He was shocked and did not even know that there was a CCTV around because it was properly hidden. That is the same way God sees everything you do and records it. Why do you think God is called omniscient? It is because he knows everything and he sees everything. There are some cameras with night vision. It doesn't matter how dark the place is, it will display it brightly and clear for anyone to see. And that is how God is. No matter where you carry out that evil act, in darkness, in light, God can see you clearly and he is recording everything as it is happening. You must have heard about the big screen in heaven. It is where all that you have done while alive, all your sins will be played for you to see. It is not like there is anywhere in the Bible where the big screen in heaven is mentioned, but God is documenting everything you are doing and you will watch them on the judgment day. Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. What are you doing with your life now? Are you doing some things secretly and you think you are safe because you haven't been caught by your friends, parents, wife, husband, or someone close to you? Have you ever thought of it that everything is plain before the Lord? Luke 12, 2 through 3. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. This is a call for every Christian to stop hiding in the dark to do ungodly things. These things are plain before the Lord, and he has the tapes. Did you hear me? God has tapes, and everything will be played for you to see on the judgment day. When we talk of God having tapes of what you are doing, what does that mean? Firstly, it means you cannot run from God. How can you say you want to run from the face of God? The face of God covers this earth. God will always see you. You cannot hide anything. Psalm 33:13 KJV says, The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. If you think you can run from God and keep sinning in the secret, a day will come that your sin will be displayed openly. David knew there was no way he could run away from God. He had committed some secret sins that he could be punished for. He couldn't run from the Lord because there would be nowhere to run to. He admitted in Psalm 139, 7-8, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. When you hear that God has your tapes with him, it means you can't run to anywhere. He sees you clearly and everything will be played for you to see. David knew that even in hell God would be there. Dying won't save you. God will even bring forth the dead on the day of judgment as is seen in the book of Revelation. Second, God has tapes means he knows all. We call God the omniscient because he knows all things. In case you don't know, it is not only what you are doing in the dark that is recorded, but the evil you are thinking of is being recorded too. Yes, God sees your heart. He knows what you are thinking. He hears it loud and clear. Jeremiah 17:10. I the Lord search the heart. I try the reins. 
even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Some people believe they can just lust in their hearts and no one will know. Nobody can tell. God is documenting all of the evil thoughts you are thinking. He will judge you according to that too. God is not limited to knowing your movements or what you speak. He knows what your intentions are for every action. What have you been thinking in your heart? Do you think God cannot see it? If you don't know, God looks at the heart first before looking at what you are doing. We may be looking at the physical appearance of people and think they are perfect, but God is looking at the heart to see what they truly are. When God set Samuel to anoint a king from the house of Jesse, Samuel was looking at the height and the body shape of the sons of Jesse, but God made him understand in 1 Samuel 16.7 KJV that, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. This is the time for you to start working on your heart. The church is so judgmental with sins of the flesh, such as fornication, adultery, masturbation. We are quick to judge these sins from a person, but we tend to have a blind eye to the sins of the spirit. We tend to turn a blind eye to pride, jealousy, lust, greed, because the sins of the spirit can live quietly inside you. But God can see a heart full of pride a mile away. Examine yourself. As human beings, in our finite mind and concept of morality, ethics, and judgment, when we are wronged, we demand justice. Justice is simply the recourse for wrongs committed against us. We have our boundaries that we have set up as our law. When someone violates, we demand some level of retribution even if it is an apology. As a nation, we are governed by a set of laws. When someone contravenes these laws, there are repercussions, whether it may be a fine or probation or jail time. This innate desire to hold people culpable must be seen as a signal from a higher judge. If we, in our finite minds, with limited information about a person's heart, we demand justice. How much more should the infinite God demand justice? God is not limited as we are. He says in Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve, there is no thought or feeling that is hidden from God. There is no motive, attitude, or intention that escapes the probing eyes of God. According to 1 Samuel 16, 7, we look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God now sees and knows everything, and there is a record of every action and every deed that one day we'll have to give an account for. Hebrews 9:27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. When God reviews your life, what will he see? You see on judgment day there will be no wrongful convictions because God sees the heart and knows the motive behind the actions of every man. On this day there will be no place for a lawyer to argue for the unrepentant sinner. All motives and actions will be called up and will be weighed in the scale of God's justice. Those who are found wanting will get their just reward, and those who have repented in the time allotted will receive their rewards as well. David declares in Psalm 7:11, God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. God's judgments are based on His righteousness. No one can contest His ruling because they are righteous. No one can question His justice because they are righteous. No one can appeal His sentences because they are righteous. The omniscient God will reveal all the deeds done in darkness. They will be brought to light. 
We must pay attention to the things we do and even more the things we think. Jesus declares in Luke 12, 2 through 3, Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light. And what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on housetops. This should make even the righteous tremble, let alone an unrepentant person. We all have thoughts that will be brought into the light that we are not proud of. We have all whispered words that we would be ashamed to hear being said aloud. I know I have thought about things that I had no business thinking, and I am sure that you have also. This is why it is important that every person must live with the consciousness that their deeds and thoughts will be brought up to be accounted for. We must not be careless in how we live. God is watching. Examine yourself. This is the time for you to request a clean heart from God and start afresh. It is time for you to fill your heart with the Word of God to clear ungodly thoughts and sins from the spirit of it. Psalm 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thirdly, God has tapes means your sins will find you. Numbers 32.23 but if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. I don't want to know what you have done or how you have done it. It doesn't matter if you were the only one there when you committed the sin. The truth is that the sins you have committed will find you out. I remember an old preacher who came much to church. He used to go from state to state preaching the gospel. He was preaching on the same subject that, be sure your sin will find you out. He told us of a lady who asked to speak to him because she was struggling to go on. She had been married to her husband for 15 years, but in the first year of her marriage, she committed adultery. And it had been eating her up inside for 14 years, and she hadn't told her husband what she did, but the sin was eating her alive. Be sure your sin will find you out. There is no way you will sin and bury it away. You don't bury sin. On that day, your sins will find you and stand against you. What is it that you're supposed to tell? It's simple. Renounce every hidden sin. Confess them and ask God to forgive you. That is the way to become free. If you want God to erase your history and give you a clean sheet to rewrite your life, you have to ask God to forgive. You have to confess your sins. You have to ask God to forgive you. You must go to God through Christ and be cleansed.